This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. The following contains descriptions of physical violence, sexual violence, and graphic descriptions of autopsies. All right. Hey, listeners. Welcome to episode 72 of TGIC Podcast. I'm Jillian. And I'm Izzy. Um, yeah. So we are back. Um, we're on Zoom again. Sorry. I know our like last few episodes have been like this. Um, for you guys, yeah. it's been like three months worth of episodes, but for us, <laughs> it has been one day. So yeah. we're sorry it's on Zoom. We scheduling just did not work out for us this time, but we're we wanted to give you guys something. So we are yeah. here. So if our audio is a little wonky or if there's gaps, that's why, but we're trying our best. Hopefully it doesn't sound exactly. too bad. I don't think it, I don't think it will. And also I'm ill. So that please excuse the Lindsay Lohan voice. I'm sure if you're an OG, you remember, I can't even remember what episode it was, but there was one episode where I had the Lindsay Lohan voice just randomly. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I forgot about that. You totally did for like a whole episode. Yeah, and it was so random. Like I wasn't even sick. I just didn't have a voice. Like, and it was like right when we started recording. Yeah, that was weird. I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so if this episode's a little off, that's why. But we're, we're trying. We're here. We're trying. Um, we're getting there. I think it's so funny when we pre-record episodes because like, like right now it's January 3rd. That that's like yeah. it's January 3rd. And when you guys listen to this, it'll come out on March 14th. Like that is so that's far crazy. in the future. Like that's that is crazy. most of the way through spring semester. Like I will be on spring break. I'm cur- like we are currently on winter break right now. That's crazy. Like that is insane. My <laughs> spring break will have already happened. Oh my god. That's just crazy. I know. Like that puts you so far in the future. Like, I don't even know. Like, what if something crazy happens by then? Like, I don't know. Like, what if there's some sort of like, what if some crime is solved? Don't you ever wonder, like, when we pre-record stuff, if like some crime will get solved and then like we covered it and it like gets solved well, like yeah. in between the time? Yeah. yeah. I've never I thought about that until cool. now. That'd be wild. That would be wild. Like the Zodiac killer. I know. I want that to get solved before I die. Yeah. Like in like 70, 80 years, I need it to be solved. I need John Benet Ramsey to be solved. And John Benet Ramsey. I like. And I don't, I don't understand how John Benet Ramsey hasn't been solved. No, I don't either. I'm just confused because everybody knows that case. Even if you don't know true crime, you know that case. So, like, how the fuck hasn't it been solved? I think it's just like because of the horrible investigation. That's terrible. Anyway, Which I will not. I will not get angry about that today. But I am angry. That is you know, not I just saw there was something about it, like cold case investigators were like, you need to look back at this, like recently. Really? Yeah. Like, I don't know if anything will actually come of it, but. Hey, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Oh my God. That, this, this voice. I know. I know. You never know. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's all besides the point. Um, Today we'll be discussing the disappearance of Lauren Spear. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with the background today. Um, Lauren Spear was born on January 17th of 1991 in Scarsdale, New York. Okay. Also, I don't know why Scarsdale sounds so familiar to me. Like, I don't know if a show is based in it. It might be. It's a part of like Westchester County and Westchester, New York's pretty well known. Okay. Because I don't know if like I investigated another case where they were in Scarsdale or like if I know someone from Scarsdale, but it sounds very familiar. And yeah, like driving me crazy that I don't know where. <laughs> so she grew up with her family in Scarsdale, which is like a fairly affluent neighborhood. In 2009, she graduated from Edgemont High School in Greenville, North New York, not North Carolina, New York. Um, and she started at Indiana University that fall, where she was a textiles merchandising major. 
And many of her close friends at IU were people she had met as a teenager at Camp Tawanda, which was a sleepaway camp in Pennsylvania. And this included her boyfriend, Jesse Wolf, and her other close friend, Jay Rosenbaum. It's kind of crazy that like her close friends, she had met at a camp in a different state and she was from a different state. I would think that's crazy, but my mom went to college with a lot of her sleepaway camp friends. And oh, really? Like the sleepaway camp. I think was in a different, I don't know where the sleepaway camp was, TBH, but they all went to school in a different state. So yeah, well, it was in Pennsylvania. That's not that weird. That's all close to New York. Like I think like my dad grew up in New Jersey. And I think he went to camp in Pennsylvania, like Indiana, New York, and Pennsylvania. Oh, I, Indiana is just a popular school. I think. Yeah. Okay. Fair point. I just, point. you know what? I just assume, I assume that everyone that lives in the North, like they go to like other places. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they are the most spread out from what I've observed in college. Like, really? Yeah. I feel the opposite. Interesting. Cause like all of like every, a lot of like, I'm the only person in Vermont from the South, which is crazy. Like every single, yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I think that people from the North tend to travel like outwards. Like I think when I talk to people that like are from out of state at my school, like a lot of their, their friends are all over the place. Like they're not like all one other school, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So like I don't know. I think like, that's... Yeah. Like I feel like Southern schools, like a lot of people stay in the South. Yeah. Generally. Same with like California. I feel like a lot of people stay in California. Dude, if I had in-state, in-state tuition access to California schools, I would take advantage of it. No, literally tell me about it, but they're so hard to get into. Yeah. Even still, though, there's like, aren't there transfer options? That's like so, like, bad. I can't, I'm not like I'm changing my life now, but Jillian's like, I'm about to transfer to California. Y'all just wait. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna get into the timeline for this case. <laughs> um, so on Thursday, June 2nd, 2011, that night, Lauren went out drinking with her friends, which, okay, this is like really random, but I noticed that this, this takes place at the beginning of June. And so, like school is no longer in session. Yeah. That's what I like. Say. I like, cause at first I was like, wait, why was she there? But I mean, I guess, I mean, she was an upper class when she was 20. So she, she would have had an apartment. Yeah. yeah. So that night Lauren went out drinking with her friends. So her boyfriend wasn't with her with that night, but they'd been like texting back and forth before he went to sleep. Um, I've seen a couple of things like that. Like I'm not exactly them, these are non-confirmed. These were like, I saw this on Reddit, but okay. <laughs> that when they were texting that she had said that she had a migraine and she was going to go to bed soon to her boyfriend. But obviously like she didn't, she ended up going out drinking with her friends. Hmm. Um, but I do think that's like a little weird. I don't know if that was something he reported or if that's the text they saw or like what that was about, but it's like this weird thing that's thrown into the mix. Yeah. Cause like, did he not, like, if that is true, like, did he not know that she was going out? Like, did she yeah. have it from him on purpose? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Or maybe she did have a migraine and then she just decided to go out. And then that's like a whole other complicated thing later. Yeah. Thirsty Thursday. She's rallying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so before I like get more into the detailed timeline, it's like, important that I point out that like witnesses that saw her that night said she was very drunk like out of the normal intoxication level Mm. so she was definitely seemed very out of it that night so in the early morning hours of Friday June 3rd of 2011 at 12 30 a.m Lauren left her apartment with her friend David and they went to their friend Jay's apartment to hang out with him and his neighbor Corey was also there so I guess they were all hanging out for a while and then they eventually decide to go to downtown and that's at 1 46 a.m. She arrives with her friends at Kilroy sports bar okay. at 2 27 a.m. Lauren leaves the bar with Corey, who is her friend Jay's neighbor. At this point, she did not have her phone or her shoes. Apparently she had hey. taken off her shoes because there's like a sand area, like a sand porch or something. And so she took her shoes off out there, but then never put them back on. A sand porch, like at the bar? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. That's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they have like bocce ball or something. <laughs> you ever play bocce ball? Which one is bocce ball? It's like, they're really hard balls. Like I want to say they're like as heavy as like, like a pool ball. But like, and then you have to like throw it. 
Yes. Yeah. I have that at like a restaurant here. Yeah. They have it at a restaurant near us. If, yeah. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So she left her phone and her shoes at this bar, which is kind of crazy because then they go on to walk. And then I'm just thinking, a girl's barefoot this whole time. Yeah. Like my feet would be killing me. Yeah, mine would too, but at least it's like June, so it's not cold. Yeah, that's true too. Um, so Corey then walks her back to her apartment complex. Um, they get back to the apartment complex where she lives. Um, while they're like there, this is at 2:30, by the way. This was like a really short walk. Okay. Um, when they're there, they see this guy named Zach, who I guess kind of knows her. I'm not really sure. I don't think he was like a random because they like knew his name, but like I don't think they were close friends or anything. Um, he sees her and notices that she's like very out of it and like just checks in to make sure that she was okay. Aww. And her and Corey were like, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. And Zach was like, okay, you should get her upstairs. And he's like, okay. So Corey and Lauren get to the fifth floor where Lauren's apartment is and they run into these four guys. Um, I'm pretty sure they were friends of her boyfriend, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Um, apparently Corey said something obnoxious to one of them. I'm not really sure what it was. And one of the guys punches him. Oh, like what was so then, just to the point where it like warranted him getting punched in the face? Yeah, I don't know. He must have said <laughs> something unpleasant. Yeah. Um, but he said that after that, he doesn't really remember the rest of the night because he was like, you know, Out of it. punched and really drunk. Yeah. Um, drunk. Okay. what? Punch drunk. <laughs> Isn't that like a phrase? I don't know what it means. I've never heard it before. Maybe it is a phrase. Let me... I need to look it up now because I know it is a phrase. Punch but I don't know. drunk. Punch drunk. Is that like when people try to like spike the punch? Stupefied by or as if by a series of blows to the head. Interesting. So like, oh, confused. so like drunk because of punches. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, I follow. I follow. But I was saying it as like a play on words because he was both punched and drunk. <laughs> no, I got your play on words, but I took it as like the other way. Like I thought you were saying he was drunk on punch. Like, oh. <laughs> Which doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> but yeah, I got it. That's funny. <laughs> okay. So then at 2.48 a.m., for some reason, they exit the apartment complex. I don't know why they made it up to the floor of her apartment just to leave again. Yeah. But maybe it was because he was punched and he needed to get back. I don't, I don't fucking know. But he was punch drunk. <laughs> they leave the apartment complex and they go into an alley. Um. She exited the alley at 2.51 a.m. and then walked toward an empty lot. Her keys and purse were, like, later found along this walk. So at some point while she's walking, this is just dropped. Um, Lauren and Corey get to Corey's apartment shortly after this. Uh, Corey's roommate, his name's Michael, he was home. And he said that Corey was also just, like, really drunk. Like, the two of them were, like, stumbling. Corey apparently, like, threw up in the staircase on the way up to the apartment. Like, they were just really out of it. Yeah. Um, so then Michael decides, he's like, okay, I'm putting Corey to bed. So he puts Corey to bed. And then he was like telling Lauren that she should just sleep over. So she's like, she's really drunk. He doesn't want her to just try to get back to her apartment by herself. So he's like saying she should just stay over for her safety. Lauren insists on returning to her her apartment. So that's where we're at. At 3.30 AM, Michael calls Jay to come take care of Lauren because at this point, she was, like, trying to get Michael to go back to her apartment to drink with him. And I don't think they were friends because I think this is already kind of, like, a loose connection. Like, her friend is Jay. And yeah. then it's, like, she was with Corey, his neighbor. And then Michael is this, like, other guy. Like, his room, Corey's roommate. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's kind of a loose connection. So, like, I would be kind of annoyed, too. So, he calls up Jay. And he's, like, I need you to come take care of her. Um, And Jay came and they went back to his apartment because they're all in the same building. While there, he noticed that she had a bruise under her eye. And when he asked about it, she didn't really know how it got there. So it was kind of just assumed that she like had a fall earlier in the night because she was drunk. But no one really knows how she got this bruise. Okay. Um, Lauren made two calls before she left Jay's. One was to her friend David that she started the night out with. And then one was to another friend. Neither answered the phone. She didn't leave a message. And so this is kind of like the last like attempts of contact she made that night. Okay. Um, at 4.30 a.m., Lauren left Jay's apartment. The last sighting of her was from Jay, who saw her at, like, an intersection heading towards her apartment. So she was on her way back. 
And based on like the walk times from earlier, I don't think they lived too far away. Um, so she is walking towards her apartment. She's barefoot again. Like she doesn't have any shoes. I forgot and, about that part. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like there's a lot going on. She's just barefoot the whole time. Yeah. Um, like I'm walking. Yeah. So she's barefoot. She's wearing black leggings and a white t-shirt. And that is the last time that anyone saw her. So later on that morning, Jesse, who was her boyfriend, had texted Lauren and received a response from an employee at the bar. And he acted pretty quickly, actually, and like reported her missing and I think got in contact with her parents. Okay. Good boyfriend for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's scary. That's so Mm -hmm. crazy. That's like it. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's interesting. So her timeline for this case is so detailed because a lot of her night was actually caught on security camera footage. Mm. Like that's why there's precise timings for everything because like they're in these apartment buildings, apartment like hallways, you know, they have cameras. Um, there's like all these cameras outside along her walk and then like getting into the bar, like there's cameras there. Like, so she was like seen on a lot of these cameras, but then all of a sudden it's just like her last sighting is like from her friend walking back towards her apartment and then she never makes it back to the apartment. Exactly. So like the question is, how did she just disappear into thin air after being on camera the entire night, basically? Mm-hmm. And she's like super drunk, which is also like really just concerning. Yeah. Like why? I None of those guys were like walked her back. I don't know what's wrong with them. I know. Like you would think that like. Like if she I wanted to go back to her apartment, everything. fine. Don't make her stay over. But like make sure she gets back. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Like if you're going to go through the trouble of like calling people to come get her, you might as well just walk with her. Yeah. Especially if you're not drunk. Yeah. I don't know. Um. So let's get into the theories a little bit. So the first one is the accidental overdose theory. So Lauren had been obviously drinking and she had used drugs the night of her disappearance. According to her boyfriend's mom, Lauren had actually been asked to leave the specific sleepaway camp where she'd met a lot of her friends because of drug use. Um, She was actually arrested nine months prior to her disappearance for public intoxication and illegal consumption. And police actually found cocaine in her room after her disappearance. Lauren also suffered from like a really rare heart condition that increased her risk when using drugs or alcohol for, I guess, like death or like illness or injury. And while it makes sense that like she could have overdosed, then where is her body? Like, wouldn't it be in her apartment? Yeah. Walk home. Because like. I think that in this case, the accidental overdose thing is the most common theory. Like that night, her friend said that she had been drinking. She had used cocaine. I think she'd also use some sort of pill or something. Mm. So it's likely, especially with her heart condition, that something could have occurred. But like, where is her body then? Because she didn't make it back to her apartment. And then it's like, she wasn't on like the street or anything. Like, where is she? Yeah, exactly. Like it's so... Like you don't just evaporate. No, you don't just disappear. Um, and she could, if she was really, truly having like a medical emergency from being on so many drugs, like she wouldn't have gone far. Yeah. You know I mean, um, so it's actually theorized that the guys that she was with could have potentially hidden her to avoid criminal charges, but a PI that looked into her case does not think that, that makes sense. Um, and also like, I, I feel like they would just call like a hospital. I feel like they're lucid enough to, I don't know. Yeah. Like, from what the PI was saying was just that, like, you know, it's a college campus. And apparently also, like, Indiana, it's a party school. Like, drugs and alcohol are common enough. Like, they wouldn't really go to that. Like, you'll get in more trouble for trying to cover up that than, like, just Reporting saying, it. oh, my God, my friend overdosed, you know? Exactly. Like, it doesn't really make sense. with her for, like, the whole night. Yeah. And then also, like, there's just the idea, like, there's, like, these drunk guys, right? How are they going to orchestrate hiding a body? Exactly. Like, and why would they like talk to the police so much? Yeah. Like, well, actually they don't end up talking to the police. That's like something that kind of does make them sketchy. Oh, they like, they lawyered up pretty quickly, but like but, as like, people do in cases, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel but, like that's the smart thing to do. If you're... Um, I just think it's so unlikely that they did anything because of how drunk they were. Like Corey's roommate said he was like stumbling. So how is this man who's like stumbling and throwing up on the staircase because he's so drunk going to cover up a body? No, exactly. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. 
yeah, that makes no sense to me. Yeah. Um, another theory in this case is the stranger abduction theory. So the police have just kind of mentioned this as a potential theory because, you know, someone could have taken, this is like a crime of opportunity. Um, she was walking alone at night. Like someone could have just seen her and snatched her. Like that's, it's scary. Like ugh, the world kind of just sucks. Cause that's like, it's so scary just to be a girl sometimes. I know it is really scary. Um, but there's not really anything to substantiate this theory. It's just kind of a possibility because, you know, she essentially just vanished. Yeah. Um, her parents have like said, they don't think this is what happened. They just think it's really unlikely that some random person did this, but it is always a possibility. Yeah. Um, the next theory is the local killer theory. So in 2015, a man named Daniel Messel killed an IU student named Hannah Wilson and Hannah actually disappeared after a night out at Kilroy Sports Bar. However, her body was discovered in a nearby county the next day, and Daniel Messel's phone was found at the scene, which just, like, I feel like it wasn't, I feel like it would be such a loose connection for them to be connected. Like, yeah, like, I feel like it makes sense that, like, you know, they were at the same bar, yes, and then there's, like, this guy, like, it makes sense. However, this was, like, a couple years later, and it seems like he just got worse at committing crimes, like, yeah, killers tend to escalate, they tend to get, like, more strategic, like, why would Lauren's case be the one that he, like, somehow, like, does get caught with no bodies ever found, and then the next one, it's, like, the body's found the next day, and his phone's at the scene. Yeah, like, he left his freaking phone at the scene. That's yeah. just, yeah. So, like, I could understand the, like, connection, but I just don't think it makes total sense. Yeah, I agree. Um. Okay, so then what we were kind of touching on earlier is that, like, the guys, her friends, like, they're kind of theorized have done something. Her parents are really convinced that they are either involved in her disappearance or at least know more than they're saying. And her parents actually filed civil suits against Corey, Jay, and Michael for negligence because they said that she's like they gave her alcohol after she was already visibly drunk. Mm -hmm. But these civil suits were dismissed. They were first dismissed for Michael just because he had no official duty of care. Like this is the roommate. Like he really had no. Nothing to do with it. Yeah. Like he was like, he was just there. Like she just kind of showed up there. Like, you know what I mean? Like he was, he yeah. had no duty of care. Her, the other two were her friends that were out with her. Um, So her parents are very convinced that they have something to do with this, but the police have also never named them as suspects in the case. So they're not really an official theory. Yeah. Um, That's just like, the case is kind of just confusing like that because there's all these like little theories. Like people throw around the idea that her boyfriend could have done something, but like the police have never mentioned anything. And like, it's not really talked about. Like the boyfriend apparently was really helpful at the beginning with giving information. And then he just like left town. Yeah, which makes no sense. But no one really names him as a person of interest. So that's also kind of weird. And I think it's like, I still think it's kind of weird that like, even if she did just have a migraine and she wanted to like not talk to him or whatever, like, and she just decided, oh, I'm going to go out like last minute. Mm -hmm. I still think it's kind of weird that like, she didn't even think to text him like later in the night or call him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. And then there's, like, they ran into the boyfriend's friends. Like, I'm pretty sure those guys that punched Corey were friends with her boyfriend. And there's, like, that altercation. So that's just also, like, another weird thing that happened, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But it just seems like we don't have enough information, like, at yeah. all. Like, it's weird, though, because, like, the timeline is so precise. It's so much information until it's just she's gone. Which is great. Like, she just disappeared into thin air. Yeah. There's also, like... Apparently, she's like, this was me. This was me, like, on Reddit earlier reading stuff. But, like, there's potential connections to her being a victim of... Do you know who Israel Keys is? Yes. He's, like, a serial killer in that area. But there's, like, they suspect that maybe she was a victim of his, which is possible. Like, yeah. that kind of, like, victim profile and everything. But I don't think that's been looked into that heavily. Um, I also saw that maybe she was connected. Do you know the Delphi murder? I don't. It's, like... I'm sure you've heard about it. It's like these two girls, they were on a walking trail. Yes, I remember. And then it was recently a solved. picture of like the guy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was recently solved, but I saw someone on Reddit talking about how like maybe it was, this was like his first victim because oh. people think it's unlikely that those girls were his first victims because of how like orchestrated it was. Crime was. Yeah. Yeah. So I, mean, I don't know. There's a lot going on with this case, but it's been what almost 
13 years since she disappeared and there just really hasn't been a lot of updates. Uh, That's so unfortunate. Like, I just feel like there's just like a few critical pieces missing and it could be solved. I know. Someone, someone's got to know something. Yeah. But yeah, this was the disappearance of Lauren Spear. Make sure to check back in April for another new episode and follow us on Instagram at tgic.podcast. Bye. Bye.